Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and in this video, I'm gonna show you that you and only you should be replacing the brakes on your AMG car, your Beamer, your Audi, your Porsche, your Corvette, your CTS-V, any car that has performance-oriented brakes, you should be replacing at home and saving yourself a ton of money and then probably spending that money on performance parts to make your car go faster. That always makes sense. In this video, I'm gonna show you that performance brakes are just as easy, if not easier to replace, than the brakes on, say, a Toyota Camry. It's the first normal, regular car that comes to mind. Uh, and I have full confidence in you. I know that you can do it. You can do it all night long. <laughs> and after this video, you're gonna be saying, I'm gonna go do it. Now for this video, I've chosen three different cars to show you. I'll be replacing all the brakes and performing a brake fluid flush on my 2005 C55 AMG. Uh, so I'll be able to go over what kind of pads I like to use and why, where, and with what to lubricate your brakes so they don't sound like crap. Uh, and also we'll be going over the electronic brakes of the E55 in case you have a car with that style system. And we're gonna be taking a look at the rear electronic parking brake on this awesome 2017 GLE 63S. And I'll also show you uh, the front brakes on that car as well because they are like this big uh, and pretty awesome. Uh, so this will give you a very well-rounded view. And I know that these are all Mercedes, but as you're gonna learn in this video, the same brake manufacturer supplies brakes for almost every single performance car that you guys see on the road. So they're all just badged a little bit differently. They might look a little bit different, uh, but the way to replace them is almost identical. Real quick, before I get my gloves dirty, fixing the brakes on the C55, I have to let all of you guys know about the best workshop repair manuals in the world. For about $20, you can order an instant download workshop repair manual for your car. This is something you upload to your computer and it's yours for life, no subscription fees whatsoever. And these are dealership factory style instructions, step-by-step -step with pictures pictures with torque specs everything you need to know to replace things like your brakes all the way to rebuilding your engine. I've been using this workshop manual on about five different cars and it is amazing. It's exactly what I used to use at the Mercedes-Benz dealership when I was a journeyman technician there. My buddy Sam Crack here on YouTube, he's used it on his Audi and a bunch of his rebuild projects and he loves it too and I know you guys will. So check out the video description box. There'll be a link down there and a 10% off coupon. Share it with your friends. You might might hear me say this in future videos because I don't want anyone to miss out guys this is the real deal you guys ask me this all the time where can I get a good workshop manual this is it so check it out now let's get to these all right here are the front brakes on the 2005 c55 amg now these rotors are warped all to hell so we're going to be replacing the front pads and rotors and the rear pads and rotors as well but what i wanted to show you guys first is the common link between most all of the major performance braking systems on many of today's performance cars and that is the use of a fixed style caliper most manufacturers use brembo brake calipers but i believe bmw sources fixed calipers from somewhere else on some cars so comment down below what Beamer uses. Either way, the theory and the service procedures remain basically the same. These calipers don't use a separate caliper bracket. It's fixed and doesn't float because it's attached directly to the knuckle with a big bolt here and one over here. There are no slider pins that can get rusted and subsequently frozen. And aside from the performance benefits from being able to house multiple pistons and applying direct pressure on both sides of the rotors, these are actually actually very easy to replace. You have a pin here and one here, and after you punch those in this way, you remove the retaining clip and the pads pull out from the top. This is awesome for you guys who track your cars as you can switch out between an aggressive compound brake pad and a gentle street pad very easily, and some do this right at the track, which is pretty neat. So no matter how big and how many pistons your fixed caliper has, the procedure is almost identical on many different makes, and we'll be taking a look at the much 
larger brakes on the other cars here in a minute. Now, some of the rear calipers on performance cars and some of the older cars with bigger brakes use a floating style caliper, and luckily, the GLE 63 uses a floater in the rear, so we'll take a look at that shortly. For now, let me show you exactly how I replace these brakes, and then we'll go over to the parts table and take a look at what style pads I use and why, and we're gonna talk about this stuff. First, I'm gonna show you how to just replace the brake pads by themselves, and then we'll replace the pads and rotors all at once. The first step is to soak the T30 screw that holds the rotor on with some PB Blaster, and then just move the brakes to a more serviceable position. Next up, use a small punch and hammer to drive out the pins, unplug the brake pad sensor, and then remove the pad retaining hardware. At this point, grab a screwdriver or a small pry bar and push the caliper pistons in just on one side. Don't worry, this isn't going to nick or damage a normal one-piece steel rotor in the slightest, but if you want to be more proper or if you have a two-piece rotor or a carbon ceramic rotor, you don't want to pry and instead use a tool like this or like this that goes over the top and pushes the pistons in all at once. With the pistons compressed on one side, you just slide out the old pad and you're ready to clean. I use a wire brush and if you have shop air, you can blow it out as well. I like to put brake clean on a rag to clean this area and make sure not to spray any brake clean directly on the painted or coated calipers or you will ruin them. Once clean, you're going to slide your new brake pad in and do the same thing for the other side. We'll go over lubricating the brakes in a minute. Replacing the pads and rotors is easy. Start by prying the pads away from the rotors and you just need a little clearance here, so don't go crazy just yet. Then loosen up the two large bolts that hold the caliper in place and once broken loose, an air ratchet it can help speed things along. Up next, you need to suspend your caliper up and out of the way. A bungee cord works really well here, and this eliminates the risk of stretching out and damaging your brake hose from hanging it. Now it's time to take off the brake rotor, so just remove that T30 screw that you soaked in PB Blaster earlier and beat the ever-living hell out of the rotor with a large hammer. Now with the rotor off, you're going to want to clean up the face of the hub where the rotor sits, so you could either use a wire brush or a wire wheel on a drill works really well for this. Spray her down with some brake clean and then just use some anti-seize to make sure that your next rotor replacement is a lot easier. At this point, just install the rotor in screw and reverse reverse order and you are done with this part. With the brake rotor installed on the C55, we are ready to move on to these guys, the brake pads. And I get asked often what kind of brake pads I like to use on my cars and what kind of brake pads you guys should use on your cars. And the answers to those questions uh, vary quite a bit depending on what you want to do with your car. So with my AMG cars, they're primarily street driven. I might go to the quarter mile drag strip every once in a while, uh, but these won't really see any severe duty road racing. So for me, I like to use a ceramic brake pad, and I really like this brand Aki Bono, or however you say that. Uh, now, the upsides to running a ceramic pad is that they don't produce a lot of brake dust, and the dust that they do produce is a lighter shade, so it's not going to show up as much on your wheels. Uh, these also don't emit much noise at all, so you can say goodbye to your squealing brakes if you have those. Uh, now, the downside here is that these don't bite as well when it's really cold, and they don't hold up as well to high temperature situations, and this is why uh, many of the performance brakes from the factory come with a semi metallic brake pad. Now it's not to say these can't be formulated to work really well, uh, but you'll see a lot of semi-metallic brake pads coming from the factory. This is a very versatile pad. It'll bite really well when it's really cold out and it'll hold up really well to extreme high temperature situations. Uh, the downside here is that they produce more noise and more dust. So this is kind of up to you guys uh, on what you're doing with your car and in the aftermarket they make a ton of different pad compounds uh, depending depending on what style racing you're doing. But for the streets, especially when you have massive brakes and good tires, I think these work really, really well. Uh, so moving on to brake noise, which is a big thing when it comes to performance brakes. A lot of you guys might have some brake squealing and stuff like that. Some of this is gonna be normal depending on the compound of pad you're using, uh, but there are some things that you can do to limit and help reduce this noise. Uh, from the factory, many different manufacturers have different instructions on 
where, uh, if any, to install a lubricant or a grease. Now, working at Mercedes for almost a decade, uh, I got used to using this product here. It's ATE Plasti Lube. Now, this is stuff, Mercedes makes their own brake paste, but even in their own work instructions, they recommend using this stuff right here. It is really, really good stuff. So without getting too overly complicated, because many manufacturers tell you to put different stuff in different places, all you need to know is that you need to lubricate the moving parts of the brakes. Uh, so on this style brake, we're just gonna put a light film right here on the edge of the backing plate on both sides. And then I like to put a light film here where the piston uh, is going to touch the brake pad and that reduces vibration and vibration is what makes noise. Uh, but I will leave a Google Doc down below that'll show you some pictures from the work instructions that I was talking about earlier uh, and it shows you a bunch of different models and different areas to apply this stuff but generally speaking especially with these similar style brakes that we're talking about in this video you're gonna put some here and put some here I'll leave a link to this down below as well uh, if you don't want to buy that for whatever reason a really good synthetic uh, brake and caliper grease will work uh, pretty well uh, also so let's move on uh, to finishing up the front brakes and then I'm gonna show you a little brake modification that we're gonna do in the rear. It's now time to reinstall the caliper and tighten the two rear bolts. Once secured, we're gonna remove the pins and retainer just like before, push the pistons in on one side at a time just like before, and of course, clean. Now we are ready to lube stuff up. Like I said, I use the Plasti Lube on the edge of the backing plates and on the back of the brake pads, but never any grease on the pad lining. Reinstall your retainer and push the pins in as far as you can by hand so they're inserted in the front holes as well. Now use a larger punch and the same hammer to tap these in. Here's a view from the backside and just make sure they are fully seated. Last step is to simply plug in the brake pad sensor and you are done. You've just replaced your brakes. All right, the front is all done and looking awesome. I just used soap and water on the caliper. Do not use brake clean or you will destroy the finish. I could probably spend a little bit more time cleaning this, but for the purpose of this video, I think it looks pretty decent. So we're moving on to the rear, and the beauty here is that it is practically the same as the front. You just have your caliper, no bracket to play around with. You have your two pins, you got your clip, and you have your two bolts in the rear, and that is it. So I'm not gonna show you how to do the rears because you just saw it in the front, but instead I wanna talk to you guys about rotors because as you'll notice, on this car we have the drilled rotors up front, uh, but not in the rear, which is a little bit weird. So I wanted to show you guys a little upgrade that I'll be doing in the rear and then talk to you guys uh, about some alternative rotors that you guys can buy that could potentially save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And here they are, the new rear rotors for the C55. And what's cool about this is that these are factory Mercedes rotors off of a 129 chassis silver aero edition SL. And I had no idea that these were a direct bolt on a direct fit for the C55. Uh, and they will match the front a lot nicer because they are factory drilled. Uh, now, the guys who told me about this, of course, uh, were from FCP Euro, where I got all of these parts from. Uh, if you guys don't know about them, they offer a lifetime warranty on everything, including brakes, but they're also insanely knowledgeable and borderline kind of dorkish uh, about their knowledge with some of these European cars. Uh, these guys live and breathe these cars and they knew uh, that a one year only Silver Arrow Edition SL would have the right rotors for the back that would match a lot nicer. Uh, so what's really cool about FCP is that they are gonna be putting together a list which will be linked in this video description box uh, for some more cost-effective options, especially for you guys that have those really expensive two-piece rotors that are like a thousand bucks each at the dealership. So check the list down below. They're gonna list some other factory optioned rotors that will fit your car and possibly save you a ton of money. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these brakes on the C55. I'll kind of show you uh, a final product and then we are moving on to that awesome 2017 GLE 63S. Check this out. This looks so much better. Now that we have drilled rotors in the front and the rear, it just kind of makes sense. So right now I'm wrapping things up with a brake fluid flush. Uh, the stuff in the system was pretty nasty. Check it out. You can see in the tube, it's all green and disgusting. Uh, so I'm using my pneumatic sucker. I use this to bleed out brakes. It's really cheap. I'll leave a link down below, but you do need shop air. Uh, they have a manual version as well though. Uh, you just put the tube to the backside of the bleeder and you hit this here. 
sucking out all of the nasty brake fluid. One more thing, guys. Uh, leave this coating on the rotor. You're going to let the brake pad clean it off where it needs to be clean. And also, this is the brake fluid that I use, and I'll leave a link down below as well. So let's bring in the gorgeous GLE63S. GLE63 in the legit streetcars garage, and this thing looks amazing i've been driving this around for the last day or so and it is wicked fast with its twin turbo v8 or bi turbo uh, and all-wheel drive but check out these awesome brake calipers in the front of course they are brembo and although they are way bigger than the ones on the c55 i believe these are six piston uh the method of replacement is almost identical you have your pin right here, your pin right here. Now these have a larger pin here that you have to remove, but no big deal. And then you have your pad clip and the pads slide right out. Two bolts in the rear, no bracket, uh, separate from the caliper. And that is about it. Uh, but the main reason I wanted to show you guys this car is because it does have a different style caliper in the rear uh, that has a traditional caliper bracket. And you might recognize this if you've done brakes uh, on just your normal everyday cars. Uh, and these do have the slide pins that do need to be greased. Uh, so the difference here is that you're just going to remove this bolt here, this bolt here, uh, and then you can pop the caliper off. You're going to spread those pads a little bit like I showed you before. Uh, and then you can lubricate these pins just simply by pulling them out. See the grease in there? Uh, you're going to put some lubricant in there uh, just for maintenance purposes. So they slide back and forth. Uh, and then everything past that is the same. You're going to have two separate caliper uh, bolts and caliper bracket bolts back here. Uh, and these are very easy. These are going to be just like replacing standard uh, brake calipers. Uh, something else I have to show you guys on this car. Uh, this is nothing to be afraid of, but this has an electronic parking brake mechanism right here. And this does need to be disabled before you can service the brakes. So on this car and a lot of other cars, it's really easy to do. You actually just go into a menu on your instrument cluster uh, and you switch it to a service mode. So let me show you uh, how to do that and exactly what happens with these calipers back here. All right, guys, on the Mercedes, it's pretty easy. You have your key on to position one, you're on the mileage screen, and then you wanna hit the phone answer and okay at the same time, but the phone one first, see if I can do this in one hand, and then it is going to change to that. Okay, so it says pad replacement. We just go down and then okay. Uh, and it says to move to fitting position, okay. And that's it, it's retracting the piston and we are almost ready to replace the rear brake. So it actually makes it easier for you. Last up for today is of course my 2003 E55 AMG. And when we're talking brakes on this car, we have to start off with this guy, the SBC pump, or as some people call it, the finger or hand chopper offer. This guy right here, I'm gonna be making a dedicated video on because although it is awesome, uh, they did have some issues with these and we have a lot to talk about, but basically this is what a lot of people refer to as a brake by wire system. So when you're hitting the brake pedal, you're not directly pushing fluid to your calipers. A computer is figuring out how much pressure to send and where to send it. Uh, so this is basically electronic brakes and they can be dangerous because if you do not disable this pump and you remove those pads, it could shoot the piston out and really cause some serious damage probably to your fingers. Uh, so there are a few ways to disable this pump. Uh, being a Mercedes tech, I'm supposed to tell you that the Mercedes computer is the only way, but the reality is you could just simply remove this connector, pull straight up, uh, and it's disabled, and that's it. And when you're done doing the brakes, you just plug it back in. Now, you do need a special computer to bleed the brakes, so you can use a factory Mercedes computer if you have one, or you can use a really good scanner. So let me show you guys uh, what I've been using lately. All right, guys, this is my latest and greatest scanner. This works on many different cars, so it's not Mercedes specific, uh, but it's really cool, really easy. You can diagnose uh, basically everything on the car. It'll read every uh, module on the car, but if you wanna bleed out the brakes, if you have electronic uh, brakes, or if you wanna do a bunch of other things like reset your throttle position, uh, do some injector testing, brake reset, uh, anyway, you can do a bunch of stuff with this stuff, but for bleeding, we hit bleeding, and we're gonna pick out which car we wanna work on. Of course, Mercedes-Benz. Switch on ignition, yes. I like to do automatic scan. It reads the VIN, confirm, up to 2005. Now that brake warning on the dash is telling us that we've gotten into that control module. See, it's red over there. And then it's gonna ask you for bleeding brake system, yes. And then it's gonna ask you to carry out the position and it tells you which uh, caliper to go to first and all that. So if we hit okay, it's gonna activate that pump 
and push out a bunch of fluid. And that's about it, guys. I'll leave a link to this down below. It's a pretty neat scanner. If you guys work on uh, more than just Mercedes, this works out really well. So aside from the electronic SBC brakes on the E55, after that system is disabled, it's much of the same. You have a massive Brembo brake caliper, and this is basically what all of you guys are gonna see, no matter what make you drive, as long as it is equipped with Brembos. So you have your pins here, your retaining clips, the pads are gonna pop out of the top. In this case, they're actually four brake pads, but no big deal. You have your two bolts in the back to remove the entire caliper, a T30 right there to remove the rotor. And you guys saw it on the C55. They're just so easy to work on. There is no reason to pay someone uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars to replace the brakes on your car. Now, what's cool about performance sedans and roadsters is you get the big old brake caliper in the rear normally as well. And these are the easier ones to work on. So there's no separate bracket uh, and you just pop the pins out in the retaining clip. You guys know the drill. Uh, so I hope this video has helped some of you guys out there that were maybe a little bit hesitant upon replacing uh, the bigger brakes on your performance vehicles. I know these can look kind of scary, uh, but you just have to take your time. Make sure when you're taking your wheel off that you're gentle so you don't scratch the top of the caliper like this. Uh, and you just want to keep these clean and don't spray any harsh chemicals on them and you'll be fine. That will do it for today's video. Make sure to check out the link down below for the awesome GLE 63S. Uh, that thing only has 11,000 miles on it. It's amazing. And I think it's way faster than my E55, at least from a dig the all-wheel drive uh, is practically unstoppable. Also linked down below will be the workshop manuals and the 10% off coupon code, so definitely take advantage of that. Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Share the video, subscribe, all that awesome YouTube stuff. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all in the next video.